Hey guys, Adam, VK4GHZ. What we have here is a LiPo low volts alarm. You'd be familiar with these. This is the basic type with no seven segment LED displays, just the individual LEDs there. Has dual piezos and a fixed alarm threshold of 3.3 volts. They are dirt cheap at under three bucks each. Now, if you've got one of these on your quad's battery, you want it to be as loud as possible so you can hear it when you're flying around. But what if you're wearing some goggles or a headset like the head plays here? Uh, being powered off a LiPo. You still want a low volts warning, but you don't want some super loud alarm going right off next to your ear. Now you can put some PVC tape or something over it, over the piezos to muffle it. That's a bit gammy and yuck. Now I've actually already started running this uh, head play battery down, so that's why the red LEDs are flashing like that. So we'll just run it down even further. We'll hook it up to the head play headset, which apparently drops out at 6 volts. I haven't actually Tested that. So there you go. That's quite loud. Now I've got a simple modification here that you just heard the, the, the result of that allows you to reduce the volume and actually make it adjustable to suit your own preference. Now the modification involves removing one of the piezos and fitting a 1000 ohm trim pot in its place. Now the type of trim pot I've used is one of these. This is a bog standard single turn Sermit type trim pot. They're available from uh, the likes of Altronics or JCAR if you're in Australia and have a put footprint that's really close to the PCB holes for the piezo. Now to demonstrate this I've removed one side of one of the piezos and I've got a three-way switch here. Now in one position that will hook up the piezo back into circuit as normal and in the other position it uh, introduces the trim pot. So that's it as normal. It's pretty loud. Sure as hell don't want that going off right next to my ear. And with the trim pot here, that's turned all the way down. You can turn it up. Back up to normal volume, albeit with one piezo. So you can turn that right down, so that's a lot more comfortable to have when it's uh, right behind your head. Gives you still still gives you a warning without uh, being deafening. So I'll just disconnect that and shut that up. Now, if you run your head plays off a 3S cell, these alarms having a 3.3 volt uh, threshold will fire off at 9.9 .9 volts. So I don't actually have an adapter here for the uh, con to convert the XT60 but what I can do is hook up a load and for that purpose I'll just use a incandescent lamp here just an automotive lamp now this is getting a bit tired and sad this battery as you can see it's already had some work done on it um, one of the cells isn't like it used to be so we're getting the low volts warning there on one cell only overall have a look at it overall. So overall we're at 10.8 volts. So it won't take long to long to run down. Let's put the lamp back on. Like so. There we go. Didn't take long at all. That's at normal volume. And that's at reduced volume, which is adjustable via the trim pot. So that's a lot nicer to have at the back of your head. So there's the finished thing. We've got the trim pot fitted in place of the piezo. Just using three out of the five holes that were there. You don't need to cut any tracks. You don't need to add any wires. It's really just a matter of desoldering the, the piezo and um, popping the trim pot in. Now the footprint doesn't exactly match the holes in the PCB, which is why the trim pot sits up a bit like that. That's still pretty good. It's quite rigid with the, the three legs. Now if you do soldering parts off a circuit board using solder wick here, it's a lot easier if you've got a flux pen. This is a, trust me, it says flux pen. This is well worn, like so. And if you, you may need to prime it a bit, like so, there it is. And if you just actually 
do that. You coat both sides of the desolder wick with some flux. So what happens then is, as you're um, as you're desoldering, the solder coming up off the board will wick into the solder wick much better. So what I'll do now is finish the job off and just encapsulate it in some clear heat shrink. Uh, 20, it'll squeeze into 20 mil heat shrink, but uh, anything bigger, if you can find it, will be good. Uh, make a little hole, cut out a little hole with a Stanley knife so you can actually adjust the trim pot. So that's it. It's pretty quick and easy. Only takes a few minutes to do. Um, I'll have some photos of this on my blog. VK4GHZ.com is where you'll find them. Thanks for watching.